She is the west side of the loop. So what all sides of town is it? Uh, we got we got the north side. It's split up between the Sesswood and the Backwood, but they all run together. It's the north side. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got the east side. It's the east side. It's the Backwood. Uh, we got the south side. Uh, 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 As a child, I, I traveled everywhere and lived in a lot of different places. And everywhere I went, people knew about Pine Bluff and Little Rock, but it wasn't in the way that would make me feel like, oh, damn, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, we know. Nah, nah, the way, the way that people make me feel about my city is shit, honestly, I could feel sad because I'm right here with these niggas watching them kill each other up and I know them by name and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And people don't understand that a lot of this shit that's going on, it, it really don't have nothing to do with people. Uh, just oh, they just crazy. They just wow. A lot of this shit, you know what I'm saying? It, it's it's meanings and reasons behind it, and, and you know, so it's not that these, just like Chicago. It ain't that we just animals and we just wild and crazy. You put you put anybody. I can put a group of Indians together in a small place and give them a couple crumbs and watch them fight because that's what they gonna do. You know what I'm saying? Outside of what already has been said about Pine Bluff, a lot of people, you know, think it's like just certain murder capital, you know what I'm saying, all of this. Just understand, that's a code for everything, you know what I'm saying? Streets, life, living, it's codes, morals, people have standards, you know what I'm saying? Murder is going to be wherever you go, crime is going to be wherever you go, but come live down here for a second, you know? You'll be like, damn. It really ain't like what they said, you know what I'm saying? So, but we're untapped. And uh, like, it's a lot of kings out here, you know what I'm saying? And I'm about to show them, man, for real. But the history of Palm Bluff's so rich, though, you know what I'm saying? Like, all the, one of the first wars that was fought when the people came here to settle here down in Mississippi, Louisiana, and all that was fought here, you know what I'm saying? Some of them first battles in. That's where the, the whole contraband thing come from with the 300 men, the 300 contraband men, the free slaves, and some men that freed themselves. And they uh, helped work, come together, put the army together with the, uh, with the North and with, uh, with some people from Memphis and St. Louis. Rich, rich history. Really, really kind of built this place for blacks, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the business people who came and done stuff uh, out in the world and a lot of the business people who graduated from here remain here helped build this place to the point where it was really flourishing back when I was young maybe 90 the early 90s and the 80s you know what I'm saying for sure for sure the, the late late 90s it was it was a real bustling place and this was one of the reasons why it was why, why it was so jumping but it was a great place to grow up, man. You got, you got exposed to a lot of different things, you know. There were your street people, but the cool thing about the street people back there is they respected you if you weren't that. You know, you could still hang out, you could still talk, they still, you know, that type of thing. So you got a chance to see all kinds of different sides of life. And then being out on the yard, you were exposed to people from different places, you know, Chicago, St. Louis, East St. Louis, LA, uh, wherever you can name, you know. If they don't know that this town is the best city yeah. damn near to be in, um, we got the home of UAPB, you know what I'm saying? The holy mecca of one of the leading black historical colleges out here, you know what I'm saying? Outside of Grambling, you know what I'm saying, and all of these other things. Right now we uh we out on UAPB campus, aka the yard. One of the most well-known HBICs down this way, known as the flagship of the Delta, and also one of the meccas for slaves back in the day and free people. UAPB 
was one of the main colleges back like the, the early 1900s for black people everywhere. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, lot of big football stars came through here, a lot of great engineers. It's like the biggest attraction in uh, Palm Bluff. To be honest, yeah. Besides that blues fest down there, mm -hmm. we got a couple other events, but like I said, maybe like a large, uh, the, uh, the farmer's market, one of the, one of the big farmer's market events for the whole state, that blues fest, and the homecoming here. The homecoming people come from everywhere, all around. But that's cause like I say, we we one of the biggest, we one of the most known HBC, HBICs around here. And uh, the people of town has changed, you know. Um, the black the black people are, were a little more, I want to say together, you know, and uh, sympathetic to the cause, you know. Now it's a little bit different, and it has changed over the years, you know, as things have changed. We got our first black mayor, you know, a few years back in Honda County, and all the white people started moving to White Hall. <laughs> you know, let's yeah. see the change. It, it, it knocked us down some, it really did, because a lot of those jobs going to the people in the city of White Hall, you know what I'm saying? To keep their economy going a certain way. So what do they do to us? You know what I'm saying? Give us a pay. That's why like when the city started declining, when Pine uh, Bluff started declining. Pretty much around that time, around, man, 2000, 2001. So this happened recently? Yeah, this just happened. Before that, man, this whole place didn't look nothing like this. None of this down here. Hey, how y'all doing? All right. Yeah, man, none of this. The way they tore the buildings down and let them fall apart. It was businesses. This place docks. It was a business. It was crazy man, that's yeah, boarded yeah. up, you know what I'm saying? You want to move up, you want to make something, you had to migrate from the south <laughs> and go north or go to the midwest or go, go somewhere, you know. And most of the people who have actually quote unquote made it from here uh, had some contact in another city, you know, that uh, somebody told, hey man, my cousin down here, man, he, he can really sing, you know, and then you go there and they hook up, man. Smoking yeah. North. Yeah. And it's sad because we only 30, what? Maybe, maybe 40,000 people now. It used to be about a good 50, 60,000 people. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, half of the city is gone to Whitehall. I mean, well, a good large majority, maybe 20%. And the rest have just jetted, you know, jetted off. You know, crime raised. Then, you know, the poverty level. Oh, shit, I need some money. You know what I'm saying? I, if, if I can't get it here, hell, I'm going up, you know, up the road. I'm going up north or to Texas or to Atlanta. Or, politics of the city is fucked up, you know what I'm saying, because, like I say, all the money is on the south side, they got the nice houses, the hospital, and all that shit, and then if you ride through the city, you'll see, man, look like motherfuckers living in goddamn slave days still, you know, yeah. you might see a shotgun house, you know what I'm saying, type of mm -hmm. shit. I think crime and poverty, it, and I know some places where it's flourishing, you know what I'm saying, it's real industrial, they still got crime too, but it seemed like when the, when the poverty Increase, you know what I'm saying? Like the crime came right with it, so yeah, poverty definitely here. Yeah, man, Palm Bluff. I, I don't know exactly. I know it's up there. I know it's one of the top four cities in the state for it to be as well for it to be so known. I'd rather it be known for, you know what I'm saying? Oh man, it's some real intellectual people. Yeah, about the how they letting this mother fall apart, but we got all this good art dating back to 1920 and all this showing where where the construction of the city was and pretty much how people settled here and, and you you see you see black people and white people beside each other so they do a lot of heavy slang talk but it really wasn't even like that people was people in this city was working together for the most part not to say that it wasn't no racial tension here because we still in the delta and we right here in the middle of it you know what i'm saying like i say in central in the middle of the city this whole little part on down to uh i think Maybe 20, maybe 17. Man, you see it. You can see it. Just like how I took you downtown, the buildings was falling, falling apart. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's like 
the hood like the ghetto in Africa and all that. I mean, it's crazy. I don't know. Third world country. I don't know. They do like any rebuilding, cleaning up, or? No, nah, they ain't gonna do no rebuilding. They ain't gonna do that. We ain't got some funds. They came through, got in, got in built by the city and, and things like that. But you know, I ain't gonna talk to you, but you know. I <laughs> So, yeah. They could do something about it with what we get, you know what I'm saying? And then what we, and then how they got the taxes set up, because small as we is, we should have some money to have programs where we come, we rebuild the streets and we get them buildings together and we come and uh, build on some of these houses, even places out of the city, the stuff that they own, the hood, yeah, they gonna have that type, but you know what I'm saying? No, you don't really wanna see people in that position, rather people be buying their own crib, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Instead of living, ain't nothing wrong with living on housing at all, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, they more worried about the same things that's going increase what they got going on, they pockets, than the city as a whole. And they just let it fall apart, you know what I'm saying? They don't get no fucks. They got uh, people pocketing it. Oh yeah, they definitely pocketing it. You know what I'm saying? There's been so many embezzlement, you know what I'm saying, cases from around here. I'm talking about they steal millions, you know what I'm saying? And we got to ride, pot, ride over potholes and shit. And the building's falling apart. And they closing schools and shit. So yeah, well it's talks of schools being closed. Yeah, they they parking in there. I seen I seen a motherfucker come through in a Maserati. <laughs> we need the streets fixed, and somebody around here got a Maserati with a red collar job. And I ain't knocking people with red collar jobs. You know what I'm saying? Working for the government, nothing wrong with that. It's just when you start scheming, and we gotta suffer for it. That's when I got a problem with it. You know what I'm saying? I remember about a year or two ago, they gave up large ass amount of money, a couple millions to a few preachers and was like going to uh, going to the cities and start building up little community centers and stuff like that. Man, don't you know we never heard about no community centers, none of that got none of that. So if they do send some money, it'll have for it'll have for uh, it'll have to take going into the right hands. It's just too many corrupt people here. Mm -hmm. But I think they go with the poverty and crime too, because where's a place for you to perpetuate that it's gonna be some corruption, cause it is money and crime and violence. It keep the hospitals going, it keep the uh, the prison system going, you know what I'm saying? It keep the funerals, uh, homes up the street. Oh, we gonna constantly build them. It keep them on point. Put all this violence and things, and they got the youngest. The youngest, you know what I'm saying? When I was misguided too, I started at 12. Breaking in houses, you know what I'm saying? Selling pills and weed and shit. So I know what they, you know what I'm saying? Where they coming from, but I guess it's just more, more with them nowadays. You know, they're just a little more intense, I would say. But I guess they go with the guidance, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's a disconnect between the generations. That's something pretty, pretty much everybody dealing with in every ghetto right now, around America. We need more eyes, more like-minded people, more people who want to actually socialize, you know what I'm saying, and get out and get into these ventures of doing other things, you know what I'm saying? So, um, that's what we need right there, you know? <laughs> and people to start doing and living how they really want to live, you know what I'm saying? If you want to get it popping, get it popping, you know? That's what we need. Me and my family, we got this non-profit. We just unloaded a truck, an 18 wheeler, probably good 15 pallets, but we be just donating, you know what I'm saying? Food and stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, this little, what is they call the FEMA uh, packages and things like that, uh, chips, uh, bags of clothes, all that, you know what I'm saying? Do a little, we do these little uh, kind of like vigils here and there for people. And then my pops, he, when he was when he was here, he was doing his thing so tough, they fucked around, made a day. So June 16th is his actual day in the city, plaquing everything for this shit. So, yeah, so what's the name of this? Ah, this turning point youth center right here. It's where it all, you know what I'm saying, started. We've been we've been over here for about a good 13 years. You know what I'm saying? Been putting it down. And I've seen a lot of kids, man. Crazy, crazy. I've seen them go from being toddlers to teenagers, man. Right through this building right here. She do a lot of good work. Went to school on a band scholarship, so I was uh, one of the inaugural members of M4. We became M4 in 1979. Mr. Odie Burroughs came up with that name, M4. 
But uh, just back on that rap tip, yeah, it just sort of kind of all fell together uh, when I met that crew. You know, when I, I ran into Jesse, I had known Jesse before because when I was recording at Cesare in Little Rock, he and his partner used to rap, he used to have a rap group, I forgot what they called themselves. But it was he and uh, Moses Chisholm, I believe. You know, they came up to Little Rock and recorded, and then I ran into him again down here. I told him I was setting up a little, uh, you know, a little demo studio. And when I did, like I said, he, you uh, know, Brought 1504 into the floor, I heard him rap, I'm like, okay, that's the voice. We did that first project, the Under Surveillance. Uh, went to uh, Disc Makers, got a thousand pressed up, and uh, hit the streets coming out of the trunk. Man. And once we did that, Palm Bluff kind of took notice and said, wait a minute, you know, we can actually make a CD here in Palm Bluff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it kind of boomed from there, man. At that point, after that, Say like uh, the following year after we put out that under surveillance, there had to be 20. We were in Murder Dog magazine. Oh yeah, no. I think we got three and a half minutes out of four. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, in there. Any stuff like that, you know. And then I think y'all you got music overseas. And yeah, China yeah. Oh man, Japan really loved us, you know. But at the time, my boy 15 was on papers, so he couldn't go nowhere. You know, we even had offers to, you know, to travel and do stuff. We couldn't do anything. That's the other thing. Time has got to be. You know, and your situation has got to be right. You know, so when your lead artist can't go nowhere, that's kind of, you know, that kind of, kind of holds you back. But that was kind of everybody's problem at that time. Because, see, at the time, if you wouldn't, if you didn't have a street rep, you know, street. put it that way. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have a street rep, it wasn't a way to really build a following. I don't know, back then, man, we had, I'd say, five or six crews that I felt were world class. You know, Little Click being one of them, us being one of them, uh, Trump and Click, oh, yeah, yeah, Southern Cartel. Called. Southern Cartel was one of them. And um, I also liked uh, uh, those Scarborough boys, what they call uh, them? Pressure Corner, was it Pressure Corner? Oh, Pressure Corner. Pressure Corner. They, they had a unique, you know, type thing. And that was the beauty about it. Pine Bluff, all of us were in this small little thing. But see, everybody was, uh, everybody was influenced by Texas. Cause that was the slab, you know. <laughs> so we could get there, you know, in fact. So we got a lot of our influence from there. So when they picked up David Banner, you know, from down in Texas, uh, from Mississippi, and then those boys, uh, Lil Flip and them all, um, got, uh, we're getting their recognition and their props from Texas. We just knew we were next, yeah. you know. But uh, the era kind of, kind of left us, you know. We missed that window of opportunity, like I said, because we didn't have one group that the city was behind to push to the top. And then uh, the other thing was uh, we could all make great music, but you have to have a conglomerate. You got to have marketing. You got to have you know somebody to figure out what market, how you want to market, you know how you want to spend the money. And uh, I must say that Luke, you know, kind of led the way on that, you know. They wrapped the van and oh, yeah. did all kinds of <laughs> stuff, you know. Shoot, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I look back at it fondly, man, and I know we miss being nationally recognized. Somebody for being big, we miss being nationally recognized by just a little bit. Uh, shit, man. Uh, what's up with y'all though, man? Y'all are tuned into like the rise or some shit, man. I'm Trust, man. Uh, a lot of people know me by my real name, Ken Johnson, you know what I'm saying? But my entertainer name, you know, which y'all gonna be hearing a lot, Trust, man. Trust me, not you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, with Pop Bluff right now, man. P2 Trey, man. That's, that's Pop Bluff, Arkansas, you know what I'm saying? Home of the 870 boys, you know? Uh, and, hey, this is what we're getting to that, though, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's been on the low, though, you know what I'm saying? But we on the rise now. Uh, I think a lot of... A lot of people trying to put it more in the public view now, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I'm a rapper, I'm a singer, I'm a, I'm a dancer, I'm an entertainer, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a everything, man. Uh, I do, I do the producing, the mixing, the mastering, you know. I make the beats, uh, I rap, I teach you how to rap, <laughs> I teach you how to sing, dance, all of that. I'm like a walk to school. That's where I put it in, you know what I'm saying? I'm a walk to school for anybody who's trying to learn it. Mm -hmm. Just be ready to just hear it, you know what I'm saying? Somebody gonna hear it, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna put it on all my social medias. Uh, the Real Trust, uh, 
underscore 89 and everything, you know what I'm saying? Snapchat, you know, everything. Uh, Twitter, everything. Real, real trust, man. Uh, and I'm going to be putting it out there. Uh, we got the movies, we finna start up, you know what I'm saying? The plays, the, the commercials. I do everything.